Gotham Knights Episode 5 review, where we collect the complete set of daddy issues. Daddy, daddy, daddy. Daddy. To questionable choices. Yes, today even Castiel gets involved, which means every single main character in the show has daddy issues. I've never seen a show so based around one writer's inability to get a pony off her dad before, but Gotham Knights gives us a window into their cold, dead soul. And as any story like that begins, we start in a bar. A gang comes in, running a protection racket. We want our money. Here it is, good sir. Uh oh, looks like you're short here. And so there's only one solution for that for a protection racket. We're gonna smash a load of bottles and then obviously give them a little bit more time. We've warned you. And next time we're coming for something more serious because you have to give him more time because otherwise you're not gonna get any of your money. I would. Only the boss don't accept IOUs. At this point, this guy should be very confused. Not that it stops him. How do you expect him to pay your protection racket when you've burned his pissing bar down? I had wondered how a police department this stupid actually managed to catch any criminals at all. It turns out, it's just because they're even worse. This is the most successful gang in the city, and they don't even understand supply and demand. So the bar goes up, and don't worry, we're never gonna hear about that bar again. Are you saying that's a completely pointless scene that doesn't set anything else up for the rest of the episode? Yes, I am. The only thing you get from that scene is crime happens in Gotham, and it's meant to not make you like the people in that gang, but that's incredibly difficult when they're going up against the Gotham Knights, who are so insufferable. I mean, yes, you do burn down innocent people's bars, but at least you're not Blondie from the library. But we jump to Robin's home. Her mom comes in to wake her up and bring Brings her coffee. Since when do you need to drink coffee? You brought her the coffee! I know they think it's clever. Oh, it's hinting that her mother's catching on that for some reason she's tired all of the time. Maybe she's doing things at night that she shouldn't be doing. But that is completely undermined when you brought her the coffee! You know what I always say. If you stay ready, you don't, you don't have, have to, to get, get ready. ready. Yeah. That's such terrible life advice. With that advice, you would just leave your makeup on 24 hours a day. Nah, no, I got to bed with my face done so I can just get up and leave in the morning. That's also why I sleep in a three-piece suit, so I am ready for action if need be. Oh, clue number two, she's got mud on her boots. I volunteered to help the agriculture club. You have an agriculture club? Oh yeah, you should come to our party on a Saturday night. We're gonna plant some carrots. It's gonna be wild. Who says Zoomers don't know how to relax? enough fun. Just make sure you don't track your volunteering all over the house. I'm pretty sure that's code for don't bring any boys back. <laughs> Look, I found one of your volunteers in the bathroom last night. I didn't appreciate him either, thank you very much. But they talk about the mom coming to school, because apparently they're having a parents meeting, or at least that's what we have over here. Apparently Americans do it very differently. I thought you were coming to my school tomorrow. We have that parents Sunday <sighs> luncheon. Yeah, parents Sunday luncheon. You know about that, right? When your parents come to school and you drink champagne out of crystal glasses. I think everybody did that. Fine finger food brought around by the surf class. It's so posh, they don't even call it lunch. But a mom can't attend, I'm busy at work, I'll see if I can get it changed. Surely this isn't hinting at a future plot point in the rest of the episode, because that'd be awkward. Important that I show up to these things. Miss one event, and that becomes my label. Yeah, because that's what's important. You wouldn't want your reputation at school to be destroyed. Should I turn up at school and find out about my child's performance? so I can make sure they're getting on well and actually succeeding in life. No, of course not. It's about my reputation. I wouldn't want to get known on TikTok as that woman that missed a luncheon. It just goes to show you the writer's priorities when it comes to their own kids, doesn't it? The mother who never shows up for her daughter. Yes, it doesn't matter if you actually are the mother who doesn't show up for her daughter. Only if people know that's what you are. Your label will always be badass mom who saves lives on the regular. Yeah, only because she's going to get that printed on a t-shirt and wear it herself. Yeah, I'm working on a shorter label. I could give you a few, but I don't think you'd like any of them. But you know, we needed that scene. You're a great mom, you're amazing. It really balances out all of those really pro-father storylines we've had so far. Wait, but next up, the Gotham Knights get subjected to the worst torment possible. I've got something! Would you mind leaving it at the bottom of the stairs, love? Okay, let me try this again. I brought donuts! I don't want to burst your bubble, love, but unless they're filled with hallucinogenic chemicals, I'm still not sure I'd be able to withstand your presence. But Batbrat is like, how on earth did those fingerprints from that dead man get onto that box? He's supposed to have been dead a hundred years by this point. He's a vampire. Vampires aren't real. Thank you, love. With observations like that, I can understand why you're such a vital member of the crew. Okay, but even if he is... We drop the whole- Why are you making him say lines while he's eating with his mouth full? It's not considered rude for no reason. It's disgusting. Nobody wants to see you eat. And it makes you very difficult to understand. Who thought this was a good idea, or was he just so hungry he couldn't wait till the next take? Is it too much for me to expect basic table manners from you? Yeah, the bad boys from beyond the grave, not my wheelhouse. No one believes that, love. We only know about two of your conquests so far, and I get the feeling there's probably been a lot more. But out of the two that we know, one is on the run from the police because they think he murdered his father, and the other one almost went to prison for hacking banks, and only got off with it because his dad bribed the police. So far, you are two for two on the extreme bad boys. But I 
did dig up a lead we can follow. Cressida's finances. Okay, so you've got a bank statement. If you tell me she's been paying for assassins out of her own bank account, I'm gonna walk off. So not a grave, but probably just as dirty. I highly doubt a master criminal would have a dirty bank account that you could just find. Since Cressida's name kept showing up on that nursing home sign-in sheet paying a visit to the Talon's daughter. Which was incredibly stupid that she used her real name on a book that you could just pick up from the front desk. Yes. So maybe she is stupid enough to do it from her own bank account. What if she's also paying for dear old Eunice's stay there? Yeah, that would also be incredibly stupid if she did that. I'm not just going to tie myself to an assassin's daughter via my name and her books. I'm going to do it via digital bank records as well. Yeah, that makes sense. No, that makes absolutely no sense. How thick do you think this woman is? Was that just the writers agreeing with themselves? This is a good plot point. Yes, this actually is a really clever plot point. I got somebody else to say it. That means I didn't congratulate myself. But she's not, at least not directly. She wouldn't want a financial tie because she's smart. There are some things in life which are so astronomically stupid. I think I've got to hear it again. She wouldn't want a financial tie because she's smart. No, she isn't smart. This is the same woman that you just said. Cressida's name kept showing up on that nursing home sign-in sheet paying a visit to the Talon's daughter. And that's how you found her in the first place. She wouldn't want a financial tie because she's smart. These two pieces of information do not go together, you stupid, deluded little cow. Oh, oh. Yeah, do you remember how stupid she was leaving a name there? She's not going to use a bank record because she's smart. Please, in the future, can you take your script, hand it to a five-year-old child, and get them to proofread it for you? Because I think it'd be an improvement. Yeah, smart enough to worm my way into my dad's life. I mean, to be fair, he was Batman, and in this show, they haven't really shown Batman to be very bright either. But they find out that the money didn't go directly, no, it went through a shell company. And shell companies are specifically designed not to be able to track anything back. But the Owls, they use one shell company for all of their dodgy dealings, which everybody knows is run by the Owls. So anything the shell company does is de facto the Owls, and therefore it can just be traced back to them. What I've learned in this scene is don't think about it, just turn your brain off, it's going to be fine, we'll get through this together. Probably controlled by the court to pay for things they don't want traceable back to them. Except because they're only using one shell company, anything that company does will be able to be traced back to them because they're the ones that run it. I may have hacked my way into getting their tax returns. Okay, kick her out the building because the police are going to be there in about three minutes with a warrant for her arrest. She's the worst hacker in this entire city. You don't want her even on a computer because she's absolutely terrible at it and always gets caught. Which one of your boy toys is going to take the fall for that? They even know she's a terrible hacker. Why is she even in the room with you? She's useless. No wonder she had to line up so many boy toys. They're the only way she can keep out of prison. By the time she hits 26, she's going to have filled up the entire United States penitentiary service. Does this company have an address? Why would a shell company have an address? The entire point of a shell company is that it doesn't actually exist. Yes, it may have like a fake address for post, but it's probably just going to be another virtual address that thousands of other companies use. It's not going to an actual business address. What do you think a shell company is? If a shell company has a genuine address, that's just a company. Oh, then we cut off to Castiel staring at his key. Oh, I'm really concerned about how I got this. Oh, this will be an interesting description. Along comes the blonde girl's hacker's boyfriend's father's wife, who definitely isn't part of the Court of Owls. And you may be thinking, it's probably easy to remember a name. Not for me, I remember people by description. But the only thing you find out in this scene is that they used to have a fling together, which we found out in a previous episode, but no one else has seen those, so it's probably for the best. I know my husband came to see you a few days ago. Was it about us? Because I'm the center of the universe and the only possible topic of conversation for my husband. Look, love, if he didn't come back and start calling you a five-letter word, huh? then it's all right, I think you're pretty safe. There is no us for Lincoln to ask about. Yeah, but there was. And she'd be really interested because if you've got two faces, she's got two. Okay, I'm leaving it there. But he tells her about her husband stepping up security, which she seems really interested in because she's almost certainly part of the Court of Owls. And he's like, look, I need you to leave. I've just cleaned these carpets and you've left a snail trail right from the door. Neither campaign needs the mess. Mess. You sure know how to give a girl perspective. Based economy. Can we just be pleasant for the press and otherwise stay away? Dude, just tell you've got a meeting in the morning. That normally works. Give Lincoln my best. You tell him. Apparently I was never here. Well, now you're catching on, love. I'm glad you got there in the end. Besides, calm down. I know he's got a pair of handcuffs, but I think you're taking it a bit far. He just wanted her to restrain herself, and she wanted him to do it for her. But the three stooges decide to visit the business address and find out it is actually a fully functional business. I mean, at this point, I don't even care if it's a criminal business. It's still an actual business, not a shell company. And why would a criminal gang put their actual headquarters address as their business address on tax returns. Just doesn't seem very smart to me. Speaking of things that aren't very smart, the trio turn up outside and the getaway driver slash hacker slash safecracker slash thief slash conman slash bomb defusal expert slash chemist. She actually does so many roles in this crew, I genuinely don't know why anyone else is in it, but she's discovered something. You know this place? 
Unfortunately. Turns out this entire place is run by the head gang in Gotham, and she knows that because of specific people involved. How do you know it's them? I, uh, kind of dated one. I mean, when you put it like that, the odds were high she would have known anywhere in the city. Hey, yeah, do you want Domino's delivered to here? I know a guy, it's fine. You want tickets to the big game? Don't worry, I got you. I don't even know why she's a thief. She could run a black card concierge service and make bank. I've got contacts in every building in the city. Kind of dated one. You what? You're a brother, there's no way you're surprised. Well, this just got juicy. And for some reason, it seems like the Joker's interest has, uh, made her pupils roll up into the back of her face. Hey, the gang member's not in the car right now, is he? What did you guys find? Why don't you ask Harper? She seems to know a lot about what we saw. Wait, you saw it as well? I thought this was a private affair. I didn't know you all went back for seconds. But she says this crime gang actually laundered money, and they did it for some really dangerous people, which is probably how they've maintained control of Gotham. It must have been the Court of Owls. With that much money being funneled through so many shell companies, the McKillens have to have some system to keep track of it all. Yeah, that's right. Little Miss Muffet is helping out again. Did you guys know that a money laundering operation actually has to keep some kind of books because people want to know how much money they've got? Gotham Knights introducing everyone to the concept of accounting. Records like that could directly prove the court is real and involved with the biggest crime ring in Gotham. Did you really have to say that out loud as well? Are you guys aware that if we get records of this gang's criminal activity, we could actually use that as evidence against them. How thick do you think your audience is? I can hack them. Oh, do you want to go in prison again? There's nobody learned. You don't let that one hack anything or defuse a bomb. You should start cutting wires at random and hope she doesn't blow up and then blame you for it. Really think an organized crime ring would be dumb enough to keep digital records? I mean, to be fair, the person who's employing that criminal gang was... <laughs> Cressida's finances. I may have hacked my way into getting their tax returns. So yeah, if the mastermind is stupid enough, I don't think it's unreasonable to think the gang is as well. For security, it's probably a hard copy. Oh yeah, because a piece of paper is way more secure. Oh no, we're getting raided by the police. Somebody, sort out the filing cabinets. It's far easier to encrypt data so that nobody can break into it and delete it than it is to do it if you keep it on a set of filing cabinets next to you. And remember, this is a very complicated crime organization with tens of millions of dollars going through it. It's going to be a set of filing cabinets on hard copy. There's going to be a lot of paper. It better not be a little tiny notebook that someone can put in their pocket. That'd be stupid. It's very difficult to parody something this stupid without just telling you what it is. As if, no, he's not going to be stupid enough to have said that. But don't worry, I'm keeping the most insane part of this episode a secret. You've seen nothing yet. What, we just walk up to the McKillens and we say, one criminal ledger, please? Well, no, obviously you don't walk up to them. That would be rude. She used to spend most of her time on her knees. Oh, hang on, he's got his thinking face on. This ought to be good. No. We're gonna rob the mob. Okay, Bat Brat, get down on your knees and make it lovely. It's your choice. This ought to be an interesting episode. So with that, they decide to rob the greatest crime organization in the city, all because one of their crew members had a crush. Don't look so smug with your own storyline. Next up, we get a scene with people in their uniforms to remind you of the supposed ages of these people. Again, I think that's specifically for the storyline, which is about to come up in the episode later on. Gotta drill that home. And they're just trying to convince Robin to get involved, but she can't. I've got a parents' evening. Sorry, luncheon. The difference is one's about your child's performance and the other one is about drinking Cristal. Oh, did you get an A? No, I think I picked up a Pinot Noir. The writers and the lives they wish they led. I mean, the McKillens leech off the poorest people in the city. Why would they target the poorest people in the city? That doesn't even make sense for a gang. Oh yeah, we're gonna run a protection racket on businesses and then target all of the people that can barely give us anything. Although when you'll burn down their bar for $20, I could understand why none of them can afford anything. This really is the worst gang in the world. Okay, what Turner is trying to say... Oh great, because Turner couldn't say it in his own words. We to get little Miss Barbie here to woman splain to us. That if we find the ledger, we could follow the flow of money to understand what the court is up to. Yep, that's about as enlightening as I expected you to be. So why are we getting bank records and accountancy records? Well, it's so we can actually know what they bought. Did you honestly think nobody realized that and you needed little Miss Tuffet here to come along? If I needed advice on the fastest way to get arrested by the police, I may consult her for information, but until that point, I think I'll do fine on my own, thanks. Maybe even find proof to clear our names. Oh, this is important then. If we go there, we can actually prove our innocence, not get arrested by the police. We can get our lives back. Obviously, nothing can be more important than that. We could go today if we didn't have that stupid parents' luncheon thing. Oh, sorry, priorities. How could I think that proving my innocence from the police could possibly get in the way of you eating your hors d'oeuvres? I have to give a speech. I have to be the center of attention. Nothing can stand in the way of that. Maybe a thumbnail, though. <laughs> so Robin says, my mum's at work. I can go with you. It's not like the teachers will tell her that I'm not there at parents' evening or anything. I'm not actually sure why a child would be at a parents' evening when they know their parent isn't going to be there, but apparently... 
That's what's expected in this story. I'm not sure the writers have any kids. I'm also not sure they've been children, considering they should have gone through their own parents' evening, and this will look like no parents' evening I've ever seen in my life. So you're in? Storming a mob stronghold in broad daylight? Yep, yeah, that sounds like a stupid enough plan that the Gotham Knights will have come up with it. At least you're keeping it believable to the characters. Harper says today's when security at McKillen HQ will be the lightest. Apparently McKillen's take their Sunday church going pretty seriously. Yep, yeah, you heard that correctly. We're going to break into this place on a Sunday, because there'll be no criminals there, as they'll all be in church. Okay, you may not have kids, but have you ever met any people? I have so many questions. To pull this off, we're gonna need a few prayers of our own. If I had to guess, I would say that punchline came first, and then they had to write an entire scenario just to get to it because they thought they were being really clever. But Harvey's worried. I've been having blackouts. I better talk to the police shrink at the office? Does every police station have a full-time therapist at the office? I didn't think so, but maybe. Oh, okay, this entire scene just exists for an Easter egg, does it? Right. So he starts telling about a suspect who just has all of his symptoms. He keeps having evidence around him. He blacks out all the time and doesn't know where he's been. He's He's got missing time. She says, well, he is a criminal. Do you think he's just lying about it? Oh, no, he's definitely not lying about it. Trust me. I know he's not lying about it. Subtle, Castiel, subtle. I'm wondering if he could be suffering from something like identity dysmorphia. Yeah, I may be a random cop, but I'm gonna completely come out of the blue with an incredibly rare diagnosis. Like the kind your father suffered from? Oh, what a coincidence. I can't help you unless you're being completely honest with me. What do you mean? Are we really talking about a suspect? Am I really that bad of a liar? No, your story was pathetic and came across as if it was written by a child. So I've got this guy who I think has a very rare psychological condition that only about two people people in the entire world would have. And my father was one of them. The other one definitely isn't me. It's just this guy I happen to have met. How on earth could any investigator put those things together? So he makes a face as if he's constipated and tells her the full story, which actually would admit to some very serious crimes. And so I don't know why she doesn't just arrest him. She doesn't know because this is Gotham Knights and nothing needs to make sense anymore. Meanwhile, the gang make a map of the area, even though it's entirely pointless and they don't need it at all because they only show two things. This freight yard is McKillen HQ and this charming concrete depot. That's it. Those are the only two things she shows on the entire map, and they don't even need a map to see them. You've got all the creative depth of a group of lemmings who haven't thought about how to reach the other end. Oh, it's where they do their money stuff. Yeah, that's where they do their money stuff. And stuff her. So how were you in there before? Dylan and I hung out there. That's code for getting Thank you! Told you they were stuffing her. I don't know why Robin's so sensitive about it, though. Every single night, she climbs up a set of stairs, which are next to everybody's bedroom windows. She's basically a peeping Tom, not a savior of the city. We know. I'm glad you agree. I just never expected you to admit it. Still doesn't explain. Yes, it does. I know that's where he kept his money because he cracked me open over the top of it is quite a good reason to know about it, to be fair. I mean, some say wine and dine him. Other people say just show him a pallet of money. It worked. Dylan had a key. He's kind of the boss's son. Why did you choose him? Was the boss not available? It was like, it's okay, lads. I'll rough it tonight. Although it may have just been another reason to give him daddy issues as well. <sighs> Okay, that's hot. Some people have kids so they can have a second youth living vicariously through them, and other people just decided to write Gotham Knights and project their own tastes onto them. Because it's not enough you dated a mobster, it had to be the riskiest one possible. I mean, you say riskiest, she says the one with the most power and wealth. Look, he showed her a pallet of money. We're lucky a knickers didn't ping off with such force it gave him a black eye. Doesn't change the fact that we still need to get into the place. That's true. Have you considered using the same tactic as last time? Because that one seemed to have worked a treat. So, if anyone has anything else to add, that is not about my relationship with Dylan. Well, in that case, I'm out of comments. That was the most interesting part of this scene. Well, if trucks are constantly going in and out through the yard every day. Then maybe we can hitch a ride. Oh, come on. She said stop talking about it. Don't you think enough people have ridden her already? Sorry, sorry. He means the truck. So the truck drives up and supposedly they're hanging on the bottom of it. Now, there is not room on this truck for five people to do what he's doing, but they're going to do it anyway because he drops off. Robin rolls off the back. Okay, she's tiny. Maybe there was enough room for her. And then on the other side, the three of them just crawl out and we're not going to discuss where they fit. It just doesn't work. Maybe this angle is because it was impossible. Maybe it's Maybelline. And do we really think these people have the upper body strength to hold themselves under a truck for an extended period of time? Although maybe the blue-haired girl could just hang onto the back of it and skid along on her knees. That's actually why Barry White could never be kneecapped. He just had really thick skin on his knees from years of hot. We go over to their parents parents' evening and you begin to see my issue with it. Seriously, do any of your school meetings resemble this? Because it would be weird if I was the exception. But of course, this is just another chance for drama. This is Barbie Girl's mother and she's, uh, on the sauce. Mom, can I have a word? You seem to be drinking a little bit. I can't have you doing that. Here's a club soda. You're an angel. If she'd cut the wrong wire the other week, she would have been, and then we all would have been grateful. Mom, please don't embarrass me at school. That is the only plot in this scene. I am proud of you. I'm not. In fact, if I have a daughter, I'm going to teach her one more life lesson than I had planned. Never take a role in Gotham Knights. So, you ready for your big speech? <laughs> 
Are you ready to be the center of attention? I know that's the only reason you're here. Everyone's gonna be looking at you. You are your father's daughter. Yeah, he was a quiz show host and obsessed with being the center of attention too. And he didn't know how to defuse a bomb. Break a leg, sweetie. That's a bit harsh, but probably deserved. Thanks, Mom. Either way, it's time for Bat Brat to not be crap at everything. There's a guard. If I start planning, maybe if we sneak around him, we can do this. But Bat Brat's had enough. I'm not gonna do that. Remember that first episode where I just got beaten up by everybody? Apparently now I've learned to fight out of nowhere. So he assassin creeds up behind him in the broad daylight, gets spotted, hits the guy in the face, which isn't affected by the punch at all. But it turns out if you get gently kicked into a wall, you just fall over immediately. I don't know, maybe just press the button for finisher move or something. So he gets her to open the door because she seems to literally do everything in this team and she's got to hack into a numerical keyboard on the side of the building. So I'm a bit confused when she starts holding up an antenna to it. Frequency finder. How's that gonna hack into a numerical keypad? This isn't a wireless door. It doesn't get given a remote signal. You need to put the numbers in on the buttons. These writers have no idea how technology works. Why do I get the feeling if I showed them a lighter, they'd be like, <gasps> Fire from his fingers! I would become their god. If that thing hacks into that keyboard, I'm gonna need a break. Trying to find the right frequency to open the bay door. There is no right frequency to open up a numerical keypad. That better be green for go touch grass. Oh, it works! Hey, up, look at all this. You can tell this is where she met her boyfriend. So they walk in, careful to avoid the mess. The guy finds the safe. Bingo! <laughs> I'm not joking, that's the only thing he contributes to this entire episode. <laughs> Found the safe, love, let me just tap it on the top for luck. Yep, okay, now if you could open it for me, that'd be grand. Why did we bring you along again? Because she's the one that's got to go up to it and actually crack the safe, which isn't a surprise. She does everything for this team. I say she does everything. She basically just plugs that onto the dial and a machine does it for her. It doesn't seem like she actually has any thieving skills on her own. She's got lots of robots to do it for her. That's right, her biggest fear is running out of batteries, like most Hollywood writers in 2023. But they crack the safe and find the entire ledger for this incredibly complex criminal crime organization that fits in an annual diary. Oh, look at that. No wonder you weren't worried about filing cabinets. You've somehow managed to work out how to use WinZip on actual accounting books. But then, just as they're about to leave, the Joker's made a discovery. All right, where's Duella? Over here. Oh, Joker, is that what I think it is? The gang finally discovers... All of this. ...where she got her back blown out. That's right, with the crime lord showing her this, I think we've just explained the mess on the floor. <laughs> and she's just added to it. Okay, maybe this is the thumbnail. I will say, in this, she has really nailed the Joker expression. I could believe that was Joker's daughter. So they get all excited, we're rich, oh, it's amazing, I'm just gonna stuff my pockets with it, it's glorious. Of course, there's always a buzzkill, isn't there? <laughs> It's not yours. To be fair, it's not theirs either. They did steal it. No, Duella, this is like dirty money. This has been taken from innocent people, small businesses in the neighborhood. Yeah, but what are you going to do? Decode the ledger and give it back to them all individually? You do realize you're not the good guys, right? You are the criminals running from the police and... Everybody in front of you is a thief. The McKellen protection racket is good, but not this good. They went to rob one business and ended up burning it down so they're not gonna get any more money from it. It's actually a terrible protection racket. What does that mean? It means that no one in your gang actually knows anything about crime. And she's like, no, this can't be their own money. It must belong to the Court of Owls. And if you were a group of five kids who were useless as everything, the one thing you should definitely do is steal $30 million from the gang which owns your city. This is gonna be a great plan, I can see it coming. Hopefully they send someone better than Talon though this time. But just as they're discussing whether to actually steal the money from the crime lords or not, in comes a crime lord. What am I gonna do about you? Harper? Oh yeah, it's very specifically that crime lord. No one saw that twist coming. And look, maybe you could get $20 for it, but I don't think he's gonna be paying you 30 million. Probably out of luck there. Dylan, how was church? Why did you think that was a good idea to bring up? Or did you just think it was a novelty to see him on his knees for once? I don't know. So then we get Blondie's favorite time. I've got to sit at a lectern and everybody looks at me. I don't know whether that's sunlight coming in through the window behind her or whether her ego's just got so massive it's actually blowing out the back of her face. But while she's giving a speech, her mom is um, doing stuff that can't be shown. Let's just say that by the end of the speech, she's probably gonna be going up in a hot air balloon to get the kind of height she'd require. Next, we're back with Harvey, who's just spilling his guts to her. Bearing in mind, while he's doing this, an entire crime has been planned and is underway on the other side of the city, so he's been here a while telling her all of his crimes. Why do I have the key? If I can't remember anything, then I don't have any alibi. That's not how alibis work. Alibis are where other people remember that you were with them. You don't have to actually remember them at all. In fact, you saying I was in this place doesn't count for anything. So what is the more likely scenario? Th this is just very badly written and any contradictions are actually flaws in the plot rather than deliberate attempts to mislead the audience. But she says you've got two choices. Either you're a two-faced maniac or 
You just picked up a guy's car keys and forgot about it. You're just afraid of becoming like your father. And who wouldn't be on this show because we've seen the state of the fathers, of which Castiel is no different. The man brutalized you for years. Daddy, Daddy. 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 Oh, you thought it was just the rest of the main cast that had daddy issues. Oh no, Castiel does as well. That's why we've got a full house. And that is one horrible pause. I'm sorry, Castiel. You kind of look like you're turning into a zombie. He made you doubt your own sanity, just like you're doing now. Yeah, but now I have good reason to. This is not normal, Chase. My dad used to do something to me, then tell me he forgot about it. No, he'd just make you doubt your own sanity. Yes. And now I probably am insane because I do things and I can't even remember them. I'm not sure she should be reassuring you at this point. Knows what could be happening, what I could be doing during these gaps in my memories. Who you could be doing during these gaps in your memories. Just think of the child support, mate. Who I could be. Where I could go. Look, if this turns into a musical, um, no, it's over for the video. Hopefully it won't. What do you mean by that? Let's not turn this into the Marvels. We don't need a musical number. Castiel, thank you very much. He would beat me if I spilled soda on my shirt. And then, just like that, he would snap perfect dad, who was warm and loving. You could say he was Two-Faced. One thing I didn't want from Two-Faced was Two-Faced with daddy issues. It's just, it's, it's, not, it's not adding to the character. It really isn't. I don't know why the writers have made every single character have exactly the same problem. How creative is that? Like, what happened? Lack of talent, mate. That's what happened. It's it's like writing music and just having the same note repeated over and over and over and over again. You know, it's almost as if you wrote lyrics that just said la 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 for about 10 minutes. People would have to be really stupid to watch that, wouldn't they? Who tore up your sheet music? To be fair, if you were playing the piano wrong, that can be really annoying. And he would just rush over, make sure I was okay, and I knew that he loved me. This does go on for quite a while. It's probably the best acted scene that Castiel has actually done and would actually carry some weight if every single character in the entire series didn't have exactly the same plot point to the point where you're just like oh not another one i loved him but that monster that was just as real that was his other face and she's like no obviously it couldn't be that i know you've described the exact same symptoms and this could well be hereditary but it's definitely not that and she's got a great reason why a disorder like his typically manifests at a much earlier age yeah that's right apparently he's just too old it didn't even ask him is there anything recently that could have happened that you think could have triggered this or anything maybe it just lay dormant over the years no it's just i looked at birth certificate can't be that mate thank you for your incredibly complex medical opinion you'd know by now if you had it that's the thing he does that's why he came to you for advice. He's pretty sure he's got it at this point. Then what the hell is happening to me? You're being gaslit by a mate. That's what's happening. Our bodies are very smart. I'd say speak for yourself, love, but you don't seem very smart at all. He might be, because at least he knows what's going on. When you're overwhelmed, your brain senses the threat and it shuts down that part of itself to protect you. You literally just described the exact condition that he said he had, this personality can't handle it. So it shuts down and this personality takes over, which is where my lost time is. That's exactly what you've just said and exactly what you just said he doesn't have and then went on to say that he actually has it. You're supposed to be an expert, made an entire speech and contradicted yourself three times. Congratulations. It's a trauma response. Exactly. You had any trauma that may have brought this on, Mr. Dent? There's really nothing, nothing you're concerned about here. That was the wrong question, actually, because she may just not be concerned about it, and she may just be in the court of owls. At this point, with this writing, anyone could be in the court of owls. Because everyone's just acting like a complete evil prat, so, you know, there's no distinguishing any of them. But instead, she does what everyone does. She goes, you've actually got anxiety, so uh, I'll just give you something for that. You know, you shouldn't actually just learn coping mechanisms so you can cope with that in a healthy way. No, just I I'll deal with that for you. It's been an honor to speak to you all today, and thank you again for coming. I've loved every moment of it. I absolutely adore standing here in front of you and having all of you have to listen to me. In fact, I was going to leave, but now I've decided I might want to read the entire Encyclopedia Britannica just so I can continue absorbing all of your attention. Of course, her mom gets a little bit too excited. <laughs> That's actually the same noise she made when she was conceived. Unfortunately, she goes to talk to her mother. She gets intercepted by Robin's mother. Hey, actually, I'm here. My daughter isn't. Do you know where she is? Oh, yeah, she's somewhere. They're all great at covering for each other and absolutely not suspicious in any way. Carrie is uh, around here somewhere. You've managed to make crazy eyes shocked eyes and kind of like one of the androids from iRobot. All in all, I'm pretty impressed. But she tries to palm her off and sends her a message. Quick, you need to get back, otherwise you're gonna get caught. Of course, none of that works when her mom then gets intercepted by a teacher because remember, this is a parent's evening even though they're all drinking a bottle of Bollinger. And he's like, oh yeah, by the way, I needed to talk to you and your daughter because she hasn't just missed this event. This has been a long running problem. She's been missing everything. Back at the hideout and she's trying to talk them out of trouble with the crime boss. Despite the fact that she's been responsible for every part of this plan, she's now talking them out of it as well. 
For some reason, we can still see a face. I don't know why. You know who's really good at smuggling all sorts of stuff outside of the city? My good friend, Dylan. You have said far too many words for this plan to work. But it turns out, actually, she just stitched him up. She wasn't just with him. She used that to get into the gang. And then when they did a mission, she stole everything. As soon as you got the money from our job, you split. Whoa, whoa, whoa back up. Job? How could you do that to me? How could you be a criminal, says the thief. As in you worked for the mob? I don't know why you're so offended by that. You thief. You prefer family business. Hey, the business you were doing with her is generally best done outside of the family. You're right, Dylan. I wasn't committed enough in our relationship. Do you honestly think that that is going to convince him of anything? Yeah, she's not the best at talking herself out of a situation. I'm not sure the writers have exactly um, been successful in talking themselves into someone's good books. But I guess I didn't realize how strongly you felt about me. Oh, it's all about you. Yeah. I mean, I stitched you over and stole all your stuff. I just didn't realize your feelings for me. You're not going to talk about your feelings for him, are you? <laughs> yeah, my stuff didn't change, but now I know that you're even more gullible than before. Can I have that pallet of money over there as well, please? So this goes on for quite a while. They humiliate him. They talk about how stupid he is. They have him do a really stupid move with his hand at one point. You know, she has abandonment issues. Probably explains why she left so quick. You all have abandonment issues. You've all got daddy issues. That's the only actual theme or plot of this show so far as I can tell. You're always so focused on the next thing. So closed off. I never even had a chance. Yep, yeah, they just have him as a whiny little brat. Oh my god, I can't believe you left me. Dude, you're the son of a crime boss. You can do better. But eventually he discovers he is in fact a man with a spine and so calls his gang in because nothing will be more glorious to me than the reward I will make handing you into the police. Good news, boys. We just caught Bruce Wayne's killers. Well, so they're in trouble now. Well, they would be unless Bat Brat wasn't absolutely amazing out of nowhere. For no reason. Because the gang come over, but before they get there, Robin lobs one of her pathetic little daggers at him, and then Bat Brat moves across. We get literally the slowest fight in the history of the universe as he moves to block a hit at a speed which is a bit like Neo when he realizes he's the one and everyone else is moving in slow motion <laughs> before he uses a walkie talkie to knock the guy out. Nothing is a better weapon than a piece of plastic. I think that's common sense. But the gang is trying to get in from outside, bearing in mind it's just a keypad so they could put the button in and get in. Like, no! Dylan, open up. None of us knows how to use a keypad. Luckily, the Gotham Knights do. She picks up her radio antenna, which promptly tells her to touch grass. Okay, the door is frequency. The door doesn't use a frequency. It's a physical numerical keypad, and the wiring will be inside the wall. But of course, now they're in trouble because we can't get out of there. So how are we going to get out of here at all? So the very clever organized crime gang just start hitting the metal door rather than trying to lift it. The door is not going to hold them for long. Plot twist. It does hold them for a long time. Hello. Because Joker's got a plan. We got the boss's son in here, and if you don't back off, we're going to do horrible things to him. And one of their team has already done horrible things to him, bent over a pallet of money, so uh, their threat is real. Now, unless you want to explain to your boss why her son is roasting over a nice bonfire made out of all this cash. Yep, that's not unexpected. They're going to spit roast him, which causes them to back off and come up with a different plan. Bought us some time. Yeah, but how much? Long enough to tell me about that part-time mob job? Oh... It's time. But this is the land of Hollywood, the land that no longer cares about entertainment and instead will educate you on the importance of topics around the world that you have to know about. Come with me, I need to give you a social lesson. Can we please talk about this when we're not in a standoff with armed gunmen? I don't know why you're talking about this at all. Oh my god, I can't believe you got with a criminal. Uh, we're both criminals, we're both thieves. I don't know why you're suddenly bothered about this one. Oh, yeah, but isn't it so, like, dangerous to get with a criminal? I mean, you had to go at me when I tried to go into a police station twice, and you've been getting with cri We're both criminals. Who else do you think would take her? Okay, it was one time over a year ago, trust me. Just let it go. Otherwise, you'll find out all the other times that have happened since that year ago. And then you'll really lose it. Trust you. Harper, you lied to me. Are we really going to talk about lying to people? The thief is now concerned that somebody may be telling porky pies. But we needed the money, and I knew you wouldn't be on board, so better to ask for forgiveness than permission. I needed the money, so I went out and just banged a few people. I needed the money isn't giving you the moral high ground in this scenario that you think it is. You don't understand. What did you possibly think was worth getting mixed up with the mob? You, Cullen. What do you mean, me? It is an interesting tactic, though. I went out and started banging people for you. <laughs> I mean, I don't generally think he was on your mind while you were doing it, or at least he shouldn't have been. He's your brother, after all. I did it for you. I took the job to pay for your top surgery. Welcome to the main plotline of Gotham Knights. I went out and banged a mob boss so you could lose a couple of pounds. You told me you stole that money from Dad. Does that make it any better? 
I'm not sure that's the improvement that you think it is. Of all the lines to follow it up with. What do you mean you stole it from a crime lord? I thought you just stole it off our parents. Where is the moral compass of these people? Like he ever had any money left after the booze and the horses. I did wonder where that second bit was going, you know. We've all had to talk about horses every now and again. Especially on Milf Manor. I let you believe it was from him because I knew you'd react this way if you knew the truth. <laughs> I had to let you believe that I'd stolen the money off our parents rather than stolen it off somebody else because you wouldn't be able to handle that. You're just too moral a person. Is this really where we're going? So he gets completely BTFO'd and doesn't say anything because he's just in shock. I can't believe he did all this for me. It was so vital to me. Back with Barbie now. Her mum's humiliating her, so he gets her to leave the party. Because that's what it is. It's not a parents meeting. I'm not joking. That's the scene. I don't know why it exists. At this point, I'm not really sure why she's in the show. She can't hack anything without getting caught by the police. Meanwhile, Castiel has decided he's going to be a biker. I guess he saw John Wick and thought, I can do that. There was a sneaky little cut done after the guy had driven up on the motorbike. So, uh, yeah, it wasn't him, was it? He does, however, look out across a lake, pull out the key, which is evidence. Oh, yeah, mate. I'm just going to throw it in this pond like, you're a police and that's the best way you could think to get rid of it. But if somebody digs it up, it's only a key. There's so many better ways to get rid of it. You could have taken a Dremel to it and ground it into dust and it would have been fine. You could have melted that thing, covered it in concrete, just cut it up and spread it out all over the world. All over the world's probably going a bit far, but you know what I mean. Whereas that is definitely coming back to haunt you. Everybody knows where it is now if anyone's watching you. Speaking of people watching him, he gets a phone call from an unknown number. Hello? And it plays lift music at him. Hello there, hello. Why are you playing music down the- I just hang up myself, but apparently he can't do that. And obviously, that's his activation tone. Yes, this is a guy who has split personalities, seemingly trained into him, where he's very easily activated either by his master or just calling the electricity company. Hello, I need to change my broadband, please. And then he just turns evil. Who is this? You could have hung up and saved yourself a lot of time, mate. Bug with the people that don't do anything in life, and they're just standing around, still haven't come up with a plan of how we're going to get out of here. Robin decides to answer a phone call from her mom. I'm not joking, this is the plot of the episode. It's going to know something's up, so... Hi, Mom. I made it to school. Nobody cares! <laughs> and at that moment, the police turn up. Is our situation getting worse or better? The McKellens have cops on their payroll. Trust me, things definitely just got worse. I mean, you say that, but even if they weren't on the payroll, what did you think was going to happen? You are the city's most wanted criminals, and then you broke into a legal business and then decided to steal a pallet of money from them, as well as knock unconscious and kidnap the guy who owns the business. The police should be arresting you anyway, because you are criminals. You are the people in the wrong in this situation. And they're like, oh no, not the police. Oh, they're all dirty. That's why they're after- No, you're criminals. Get what you deserve. So they prepare to enter the warehouse. The police have like body armor and guns and the criminals just have baseball bats. Doesn't seem like people are putting in equal work to me. We could do this the peaceful way or the fun way. Your call. The fun way. Definitely the fun way. You could go in now, wipe them all out, and we could skip the next four episodes. It'd be amazing. Look, I've seen the rest of this episode, but I still have hope that on this rewatch, it could change. Quantum physics says there's a chance. So their plan now is to distract the people as they come in by using the money. Well, being reckless got us into this. We're going to have to be reckless to get us out. He says that, but I know the plan, and that still doesn't make sense with what the plan they're about to do. The fun way it is! I told you there was still hope. So they decide to open up the keypad. Hang on, that's not the same keypad. That's a different keypad. The keypad before had numbers on it. I remember the keypad before having numbers on it. If I find the clip in editing, I'm going to show you it now that the keypad definitely had numbers in it. But apparently no, through the wonder of quantum dynamics, now it's changed that we've now realized that a number pad wouldn't need its frequency to be jammed. But either way, he opens it up, hotwires it to open it, and that works. Oh, please, pray tell how you hotwire something which required a frequency to open it. Because if you jam the frequency from the receiver to the motor, then that frequency is still jammed even if you hotwire this because it can't reach the motor. And if you're saying that this is where all the wires go down to the motor, and so it doesn't need the frequency anymore, then when this was a number pad, you couldn't have blocked it in the first place. And you might think that's getting to me too much, but that's so stupid, I can't believe it was a central part of your plot. And look, we can see from this angle, there was only ever one keypad. There was not a second one that they could have opened. He didn't open a different one. There's only one there. So they go in, it's like, oh, there's smoke everywhere. Ah, oh, they've set our money on fire. So of course they go and put the fire out on the money and find out, haha, it's not actually money, it's just newspaper 
We've taken all of that money with us. It's now in the van and they drive off. Straight through the crew. The police get in their cars and start chasing them along with everyone else. They took the damn money. How stupid do you think the audience are? And why is that guy that stupid? That guy saw they'd replaced the money with newspapers. What did he think they'd done with the money? Oh, they definitely couldn't have taken it with us. I better confirm with this guy if it's gone. Yeah, mate, they just wheeled it around the back and replaced it with a completely different thing to fool you for absolutely no reason whatsoever. So they're trying to escape in a van from police. It doesn't work, obviously, because it's a van. Look, I know it's being driven by the woman who does literally everything for this crew but even she can't make a van fly or something you better not make the van fly in future episodes i don't want to be a liar otherwise i'm gonna have to say i stole it off my dad so we have a really slow car chase which doesn't actually include much chase scenes <laughs> everything's like one turn and then you just go to the inside of the van so they don't actually have to show them driving anywhere or actually being chased you'll just get a car in front of the cars rather than any shot of everyone chasing each other Oh, I'm sorry, there was that one shot there that looked like something out of a Benny Hill sketch with cars. This goes on for a rather exceedingly long amount of time. Floor it! I've been flooring it. He's not on about your pelvic floor, love. Leave it alone. We're all well aware with what you do with Crime Lords, but keep your mind on the current job, not your previous one. Well, if we catch me up, we're gonna have to slow them down! Yes, and with that, they come up with a brand new plan. It's stunning, brave, original, and rips straight out of Robin Hood. Now, I know what you're thinking. Where is all the money that they stole? Because that's what I was thinking during this entire scene. There should be a pallet of cash in there somewhere, and there really isn't. But that's just because you're not aware of how physics works. And this gang have some very sneaky invention, and we call those bags of holding. So they open their back doors in front of the criminals, which is what the driver did to get money earlier. I should probably say as well, in this scene, you can very clearly see there is no money in this van, nor is there any bags of money in front of them. Because there was all these bags on the inside, right up until... Oh yeah, they're gone. Where have they gone? I don't know. Look, it's just magically disappeared, all right? Don't think about it. Turn your brain off. It's all going to be fine. There is no bags. There's still no bags. What the hell are you doing? The writers don't know. Nobody knows. Nobody was paying attention to whether everything looked the same. <laughs> don't worry, the bags are back. It's all magically here again. That was good. By the way, I don't want to alarm anyone, but these bags are where they put the entire pallet of money. <laughs> That's the thing about bags of holding. Each one of these holds about a third of a pallet. So they just start opening it up and throwing the cash out into the street. So it's a good job that the bags magically teleported back into the van at some point. They're throwing the cash out, people are running into the road to grab it, cars are stopping and getting out to grab all the free money, and it's just showering out the back of the van as they drive through the city. For some reason, Jodie Whittaker is here in Doctor Who cosplay, and the Joker is a bit two-faced herself. She can't decide between stopping them doing it and just sitting there at the back doing nothing. It depends on which order they've edited all the shots in. Because you get this, but just before this, no! she's screaming. She's not screaming. Oh, she's screaming again. <laughs> Look, we had a load of camera footage. We edited it out of order and now it doesn't make any sense anymore, but it's fine. It's only Gotham Knights. No one's paying attention at this point. Everyone fell unconscious at least 20 minutes ago. No one's going to think about this. So they keep just lobbing money about for a very long amount of time. I did briefly think they were just going to lob Joker out. You're overshadowing us in the acting. Get out of here. We're all going to get fired otherwise. And eventually, her bag of cash is just what they need to have some cars drive in the middle of the road, stop, and block the police. We get a shot of the driver incredibly happy that she's escaped the gang, which is very similar to the face she made when she met the gang originally. Littered the streets with millions of dollars worth of cash. Yeah, it was amazing how many dollars actually fit into just four bags, wasn't it? That's a little known fact about cash. It can actually be compressed like oxygen. You think it takes up a pallet, but actually it can be very, very small. Just got worse after the dog Knight got killed. You could have just said Batman, you know. Why are you so scared to say Batman in a show which is, but it's meant to be about Batman? The identity of these so-called Gotham Knights remains unknown. Yeah, that's also the origin of their story. Somehow stealing a pallet of cash in four bags and then throwing it away because you can't think of any other way to escape. After today's redistribution of wealth. Redistribution of wealth, eh? I suppose that just goes hand in hand with Ant-Man's socialist ants. Maybe they'll make an appearance and save the day for us again. Yes, that may have been Marvel, not DC, but this is a show which is so awful. Do you think the writers actually know that? They think we did it out of the goodness of our hearts. Yeah, they should know better than to think you've even got one to begin with. What do you think's gonna happen when they realize their new heroes are also their most wanted fugitives? Launch a cruise missile at you? That's not actually what I think will happen. It's more like a personal hope. Or maybe Talon can just learn to fight. I'd accept that at this point. But then Robin comes home. She opens the window and just leaves it wide open so anyone can get into her house. Seriously, it's wide open with the cold air rushing into her room as she's in a hurry to get into bed before her mom comes in and fake that she's been asleep all this time. So her mom comes in and pulls up the blanket. Oh yeah, I wouldn't want you to be cold when the window right next to you is wide open with all the cold air coming through. Don't worry about that though, I'm just gonna leave. 
with the window open. Don't get cold now! Barbie comes home and finds her mum passed out on the couch after she's indulged in, um, various different things. She's really not happy about it. Don't worry, I'm sure this gets related to daddy issues somehow. We have to have a heart to heart because, of course, that one conversation in the warehouse couldn't possibly have been enough. You really blow me away sometimes. Well, that makes a change because it's normally you blowing everyone else away, from what I can tell. I had no idea just how much you've done for me. Yep, she has done a lot for you. Miles. How much you've risked. No, she may not have risked anything. Could have been very well protected. I just want to say thank you. That's probably not the response that she gets very often. In fact, it would be particularly weird if it was. Oh, thank you. It's been a while. This is why I didn't tell you. I hate it when people thank me afterwards. I could see how hard things were for you before the surgery. And hey, from what you said, things were very hard for you before it as well. We got away from dad, but you were still trapped. So getting you that money? It was a no-brainer. By the way, the characters that these people are playing are not the ages of the actors playing them. It does give a very misleading impression of where the show is actually pitched. And I would do it again. Oh, love, I believe you. It was oddly challenging for you, was it? This was a year ago. I'm sure you've done it plenty of times since. I don't know why that's making you so happy, mate. Seriously, Harper, thank you. Thank you. You're so brave. All those hours you've spent watching videos, practicing, they all came in handy. Well, I feel better when my brother is happy, so really. Hey, I'm sure you felt very happy at the time as well. That's kind of the point. The weirdest thing is how happy he is for you to have done it. Really? It was for me. <laughs> Who did anybody think this was for? How many other people were involved that it could have been for them as well? I thought it was just the two of you. But. There's a but. Hey, there was 30 million in cash on that pallet. I'm sure that was involved as well. That Dylan guy. He was a total himbo. And also her preferred choice because he was the leader of a crime gang. Status, mate. Status. Who you were way too good for, by the way. I mean, I don't know. He was the leader of a crime gang and she's just some thief. But he was right about one thing. What, do you know specifically what he did? Well, you're busy doing everything for everyone else. She did everything for him. Hey, I told you it was involved. A pallet of cash will work wonders, I suppose. Don't close yourself off to having something or someone for yourself. She didn't, mate. She she didn't. That's literally the plot of the entire episode. If she'd closed herself off, none of this would have been happening. If anything, the only thing you learn from this episode is that she was very open with herself. You deserve it. She is a thief. Do you really want her to get what she deserves? That's, that's all I'm saying. You've used that in a previous episode, and I just don't think any of you want to get what you deserve. Now, Batman. Batman would have given you what you deserved. So then we get these two. Oh, well, they won't leave. Bat Brat and Joker's daughter. That'd be really horrible if it happened, but we'll set it up so people can ship them. It's all it is. Nothing happens. They'd waffle about nothing, but it's just, oh, maybe. I don't utterly loathe this new Bat Brat. You gotta work on the compliment thing. No, it's not a compliment. If it's not a compliment, then you should probably stop giving him those eyes. But the gang have a problem. It turns out the ledger's in code. It's not just the money where it's all in numbers. All the names are encoded in numbers as well. Yeah, it's a complex cipher that's going to be tough to break. You have absolutely no idea how complex it is. All you know is there's numbers. Maybe not for someone who grew up solving puzzles with Mr. Quizball himself. Which can only be... Stephanie. Blondie! The person who gets caught whenever they hack into anything and goes to parties isn't just somebody who randomly cuts wires on a bomb. She can also crack ciphers now. Yes, we could just run it through a computer or we could run it through Stephanie. She's a genius, don't you know? Meanwhile, we've got Castiel waking up in a room which isn't his with two wine glasses. And it turns out that he kept phoning and pulled Blondie's boyfriend's father's wife. Of course, now he regrets everything and doesn't want the mess, which is very disappointing for her. And I'm sure she's definitely not part of the Court of Owls. Somebody's got to be in the Court of Owls at some point. If I predict all of them, I'm going to be right at some point. Oh no, I was the one that called her and I have no memory of it. It really does seem like somebody phoned him, activated him, just so uh, she could get him to fall for her again. Who knows, maybe that's why he got with her the first time. Because if that's what happened, I don't think the show's writers realise what's just happened to him or more likely they just wouldn't care. No, Gotham Knights is a very weird show where one of its main plot points are, we're just gonna break into something. Why? Well, this thing will lead us to this thing, which will lead us to this thing. It's all very complicated, you know. Meanwhile, you've got people who go to a school meeting where everyone drinks Bollinger. And of course, we've got to hammer home that people who are not old enough to vote. Well, I thought it was okay when you stole from our parents, but you stole from a crime gang? I can't do that. Let alone why on earth the reason for it? has to be in an entertainment series at all. Very strange to me. Especially as the actor himself said, I don't want to be treated as a token person. I want to be treated the same way as anybody else. And if you want to be treated like everybody else, then it's probably not a good idea to constantly keep banging on about your differences. Because if I wanted to be treated on my talent rather than what I was, then I would want my character to be different than me. And I wouldn't want physical characteristics to be taken by the writers and used as some sort of badge of honor, some massive amount of virtue points we can add into this episode. Because it didn't fit into the story, it served absolutely no point. And the only reason it was there is so Gotham Knights could go, look how amazing we are. We've got one, everybody. Personally, if I was you as an actor, 
I'd be insulted. But that's just me. What are your thoughts? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe. More videos like this in the future. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.